Let's study 10th standard ICSC chemistry chapter 4b empirical formulae how to calculate them. So we'll be doing uh, some numericals. Uh, empirical formula is a formula of a compound which shows the simplest whole number ratio between the atoms of the elements in the compound. And what's molecular formula? It is the chemical formula which represents the actual number of atoms of each element present in a molecule of the compound. For example, the molecular formula for glucose is C6H12O6. So one molecule of glucose actually has 6 carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms and 6 oxygen atoms combined together. But the empirical formula would be the simplest ratio of these elements. So if I divide them by 6, because all are, all are divisible by 6, so this will become C1H2O1. It's not necessary to write the 1. So this is called empirical formula. It is a simplified version of the molecular formula. Sometimes the empirical formula may be exactly the same as the molecular formula. For example, the molecular formula for water is H2O and the empirical formula for that is also H2O. We can't simplify it further. Empirical actually means uh, through experiment. So if we are given some compound and we have to find out its molecular formula, there is a certain process. We have to do some experiments, calculations, analysis and then we can find out the molecular formula, which is quite fascinating because nobody has actually seen one molecule of glucose. And yet we know what it is made of exactly. That is through indirect experiments and calculations. We will be studying just the calculation part of it. You will be given some information, some data. And based on that, you have to calculate the empirical formula and the molecular formula. And there is a simple step-by-step -step procedure which you always have to follow. So it's very simple. The only challenging part here is the calculation bit, which is quite lengthy. But you need to do all calculations by hand. Do not use calculator. And when you submit the homework, make sure you show all the rough work. It is time consuming, but it is worth it because the number one error students make in such sums are the silly mistakes during calculations which can be avoided only through practice. There are totally 11 sums so I'm gonna cancel one sum, the third sum just to reduce your homework it's a very easy sum so you can ignore it. We'll start with the fourth sum, mark it as IMP and there are some changes in the sum without which uh, you'll get wrong answer. A compound has a following composition, not percentage composition, cancel the word percentage because percentage composition looks something like this, percent, percent, percent. Here they have not given us the percentage, they have given us the grams. And here it's not 682, the 0.682, no, it is 0 0.602. If you use the value 682, then the answer will be wrong. You won't get this answer, which is right. So 602 here. And similarly, if you add them up, this plus this plus this, the total will come up to 1.22. So please change this value also. It's not 1.30, it's 1.22 grams. The atomic weights, not atomic numbers, the atomic weights of the elements will always be given in the question paper. You don't have to learn any atomic weights. So this is the information given. They've given, a, there is a compound of 1.22 grams and they found out that this much is aluminium, this much is phosphorus and this much is oxygen. Based on this information, how can you find the molecular formula? Another thing is that they found out the molecular weight. How? Well, they must have calculated the vapor density. More about it soon, but right now, the first step is this table, five columns. So remember this, there are five columns, element, there are three elements here, mass is given, atomic weight is given, remember always write mass first, number of moles has to be calculated and simplest ratio has to be calculated. How do we do that? Well, number of moles is always mass upon atomic weight. What is the meaning of moles? Well, it's just a unit of quantity. For example, when I say one dozen of something, it means 12 objects. Similarly, when I say one mole of anything, of an atom or of some ions, it means a fixed number of that thing. 
and that number is Avogadro's number. It's 6.023 into 10 raised to 23. That's right, 10 raised to 23 means it's a huge number. So it's only used in chemistry to count the number of atoms, molecules or ions. But that Avogadro's concept is not required for these sums. So let's put that aside. Don't worry about this concept of moles. It's a totally different concept, not relevant for empirical formula. Just know one thing, that the formula here is this upon this. Always remember, this upon this. 0 0.2675 upon 27. That's some heavy calculation. But it's got to be done. And do it till three decimal places or always. No need to round off. Just leave it here. Stop here and just write all these calculations. It's always the mass upon atomic weight. There is another way to solve such sums. Instead of mass, we can write percentage here, percentage composition. But for that, you'll have to find the percentage and then you will do percent upon atomic weight, which is uh, what we have done in the sixth sum because the percent was already given in the question. So we'll come to it in the sixth sum later. But right now, I find it easy to calculate number of moles. So just remember these headings of the table. Now you've got three values here. Now to find the simplest ratio, first decide which is the smallest value out of the three. Of course, this is the smallest value. So here, if you notice, the denominator is now fixed. The smallest value out of these will become the denominator. Now divide each of these numbers with the smallest number. So 0 0.009 upon that same number which is smallest 0 0.011 upon that same number and 0 0.376 upon that same smallest number so the numerator is this same value copy it and the denominator is the smallest number out of these so what we are doing is we are finding a rough ratio between these numbers which comes up to be 1 ratio 1 ratio 4 now it's the simplest ratio which means it has to be an integer it, that is, it has to be a natural number. It cannot have a decimal value at all here. So that's good because now we don't have to actually divide it. We can just guess it as well. For example, this is obviously 1. Now, 11 upon 9, if you go to see 11 upon 9 will definitely be equal to 1. It can't be 2. It's far away from 2. In fact, I calculated it and I got it as 1.2. So we can round off to 1. Yeah, of course, if it was uh, something like... 1.7 then we would have rounded off to 2 but what if it would have come up as 1.5 then we can't we won't round it off we will keep it as 1.5 how to deal with that i'll come to that shortly but right now it's 1.2 i said so i just wrote 1 <clears throat> similarly if you check this 376 0 0.376 i beg your pardon i missed a zero out here it will be 0 0.037, 0 0.037. So this is actually 37 upon 9. Now 37 upon 9 is approximately 4. So just write 4 out here. It's actually 4.1, but that you can round off to 4. So you see this calculation is pretty easy. The only challenge is this one. That's it. The rest of the sum is very easy. So now you've understood how to make the table. That was the very first step of doing such sums. Prepare the table and get the simplest ratio. All these calculations you have to do. Yes, I've done it manually. It was quite lengthy. What? You want to see my rough work? Uh, no need for that. Next. Empirical formula. So now we'll just write the elements in their appropriate order. Uh, order, sorry. Aluminium, phosphorus, oxygen. And the ratio was 1. Okay, no need to write the 1. Phosphorus is 1. No need to write that. And oxygen was 4. So 4 out here. ALPO4. Now note, this looks like aluminium phosphate, but it's an empirical formula. It's a reduced version. It's not necessary that the molecular formula will also be this. It could be a multiple of this. It could be something like Al3, P3, O12. You know, multiplying the whole thing by, thing by 3, or multiplying the whole thing by 2, or multiplying the whole thing by 10. So, we will follow a 5-step process to find the final answer. After making the table, it's a 5-step process. Step number 1. Write the empirical formula using this ratio. 
Step number two, find the empirical weight. Empirical weight, just like we've calculated molecular weight using molecular formula, we will calculate empirical weight by using this empirical formula. So aluminium was 27, phosphorus was 31, and four oxygen atoms, that is four into 16. Multiply this, add all of them. We get an answer, 122. That's called the empirical weight. That is the weight of this. These atomic weights are already given in the question, by the way. They're also mentioned here. That was step number two. Step number three, write the molecular weight. Fortunately, in this sum, the molecular weight is given ready-made, 122. Sometimes it is not given, then we have to calculate it. We'll do such a sum soon. Step number four, find the value of N. And N's formula is molecular weight upon empirical weight. That is this upon this. Now, incidentally, in this sum, these values are same, which is not compulsory. So for this sum, the value of N is one. And final step number five, is the formula molecular formula is equal to empirical formula multiplied by this n which in this case was one that means the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula so this is the final answer so remember these five steps students this is fixed for all the sums in fact some sums can be shorter than these let's go for the fifth sum now there are two organic compounds, X and Y. So we've got two sums here, two parts. We'll solve X part first, case one, X part. By the way, what's an organic compound? Well, one thing is for sure, it has carbon and hydrogen. That's compulsory. In fact, carbon is always there. There is no organic compound which does not have carbon. Organic compounds are usually derived from, originally derived from living things like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, amino acids, vitamins, your cellulose, your cell walls, your cell membranes, everything is made up of organic compounds. That's a huge branch of chemistry called organic chemistry. But it's not compulsory that anything which has carbon will be organic. No, there are some exceptions. For example, carbon dioxide or all your carbonates and bicarbonate salts, they are not organic, they are inorganic. Anyway, I digress, coming back to the sum here. So there is an organic compound which has carbon and hydrogen only. That means it's a hydrocarbon. It does not have any oxygen or any other element. And please mention in equal ratio. That should have been mentioned. And they have vapor densities 13 and 39. Now what's vapor density? Again, that is not no longer there in your syllabus. Vapor density was the ratio of the mass of the certain volume of a gas or vapor to the mass of the same volume of hydrogen, keeping the temperature and pressure constant. So just learn this definition, but you don't have to calculate vapor density. It will always be given in the question. Vapor density is simply speaking, the weight of one liter or a fixed volume of any gas upon weight of that same volume of hydrogen, keeping the temperature and pressure constant. That's called vapor density. Now what is the use of that? You know, molecular weight is always double of vapor density. So we will be using this fact in our sums. Here, the table is no longer required. We can't even make a table because they've not given any percentage composition or any gram weight of any of the elements. In fact, we can directly write empirical formula CH. We know it's a hydrocarbon. We know that they are in equal ratio as mentioned in the question. So CH, empirical formula. That was step number one, right? Now, step number two, empirical weight. Well, 12 plus 1 is 13. Step number three, what was it? Do you remember? It's molecular weight. In the previous sum, the molecular weight was given ready-made, but in this sum, we'll have to calculate it. And it's very easy. It's twice of the vapor density. The vapor density was given, and it was given so that we could calculate the molecular weight, 26. Why is the molecular weight twice of vapor density? That you need not know. You just have to know how to calculate further. The fourth step was, of course, find the value of N, molecular weight upon empirical weight, which in this case turns out to be 26 upon 13, 2. And the fifth and the final step, molecular formula for X is uh, twice of the empirical formula, which is C2H2, which is ethyne that we'll study in organic chemistry. Now, the second part of the sum is similar to this. Uh, we have to find for Y. 
empirical formula is the same, empirical weight is the same. Molecular weight is twice of the vapor density, which is given as 39, so it becomes 78. Find the value of N, which in this case is 6. 6 times the empirical formula gives you the molecular formula. This could be benzene. It's a closed chain organic compound. Now, let's do the sixth sum. Now, sixth sum is also IMP. What is different in this sum is that here they have not given the masses like the fourth sum. Here they have given the percentage. And they have given the molecular weight, relative molecular mass is same as molecular weight. And we have to calculate the molecular formula. And they have given one condition ahead. We'll come back to this later. First, let's start the sum. How do we start it? The table, of course. Five headings. But here the headings are a little different. Element, percentage composition, atomic weight, atomic ratio, and simplest ratio. Notice that here the heading was number of moles because it was mass upon atomic weight. But here the heading is atomic ratio because it is percentage upon atomic weight. We could have solved the fourth sum using percentage also, but then you would have to find the percentage first, which is also a huge task. How to find the percentage? Well, that would have been 0 0.2675 upon the total weight. What was the total weight in the question? 1.22 grams. So upon 1.22 into 100%. So cut, cut, and you would have got some percentage. Similarly, 0 0.3505 upon the total 1.22 into 100%, and you would have got phosphorus. Oxygen percentage, you can uh, calculate by subtracting these two percentages from 100. Let's see if this was 40% and this was 20%. That's totally 60%. Then what is left? 40%. So that will be that will be oxygen's percentage. Obviously, the sum of all three all the percentages has to be 100. And then the rest of the sum would be exactly same. The percentage upon atomic weight gives you a number here, a number here, a number here, which is called atomic ratio. Just the heading is different. So that's what we do here. This upon this gives me 0 0.348. This upon this also gives me 0 0.348. So I'll tell three decimal places. This upon this also 3.832. That's a different answer. And this upon this is 4.880. Next, how do we find simplest ratio, if you remember? First, we decide which is the smallest number out of this. I think 0 0.348 is the smallest. So all the denominators will be 0 0.348. Great. And I'll just copy these numbers in the numerator and divide it. But now you can just guess it. This is obviously one. This is also one. This uh, seems to be, if you multiply by 10, it would become 34.8. 34.8. Sorry, if you multiply by 10, you just shift it here, it becomes 3.48. 3.48, but this is 3.83. So, if what if I do multiply by 11? You can actually work it out in the rough work if you are not sure mentally. And I did it, I got 11.0 something something. So, definitely it will be rounded off to 11. Similarly, 4.880 upon 0 0.348. Let's simplify. Uh, 488 upon 34. So, you can just divide that. And approximately you'll get 14. Actually, it's 14.0 something something. So 14. What if it was 14.7 or 14.8 or 14.9? Then we would have written 15 out here. What if it was like 14.5 here? Then you cannot round off. Remember, if it's 14.5 or even 14.49 or 14.51, please write this as 14.5. Don't round off. But we want a whole number ratio, right? Decimals are not allowed. Well, in this case, we have an extra step. What we would have done is we would multiply everything by 2 now. 2, 2, 2. So this would have become 2, ratio 2, ratio 22, ratio 29. This would have been our simplest ratio. But in our sum, we don't have to do all this. I was just saying, in case you get a decimal of 0.5, then you have to do this. So we'll just let's just keep it as 14. Great, our table is ready. So let's start with the five-step process. Step number one, empirical formula ZN1, S1, O11, H14. Okay, that's a little weird formula. Anyway, empirical weight, yeah, just add the atomic weights, which are already given. Make sure you multiply with the respective numbers as well and add them. 287, I knew it's 287 because... In the question, they have given molecular weight also as 287, and I feel empirical weight should be equal to the molecular weight here. But you, you don't assume such a thing. You should calculate it yourself. So that was step number three. and step number four, we know n is equal to the ratio of this, which comes out to be one. That means the molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. But the sum doesn't end here. There was something extra mentioned here. They said that 
all the hydrogen in the compound is present in combination with oxygen as water of crystallization. That means this zinc, whatever compound is there, the hydrogen is not a part of the main formula. It should be written separately as a dot H2O, as water of crystallization. So 14 atoms of hydrogen can give me how many molecules of water of crystallization? Because they mentioned all the hydrogen is there in water. Not a single hydrogen is with zinc uh, salt. It can give me 7 water of crystallization. So that's 7H2O. Let's write separately. 7H2O. Great dot. So this H is gone. H is gone. But along with it, 7 oxygen atoms will also be a part of water. They won't be a part of the salt. So how many oxygen atoms are left here? 4. So now we come to the final answer. It's actually zinc sulfate dot 7H2O. Check it out. 7 into 2, 14 atoms of hydrogen. Check. And 4 oxygen plus 7 oxygen, 11 oxygen atoms. Check. This is the final answer. Now you know why it's IMP. <clears throat> also, sometimes if you get N as like 1.01 or something, like it's 288 upon 287, don't worry. You can just round off to 1. Now let's go for some number 8. An organic compound on analysis gives hydrogen this much percentage and oxygen this much percentage. It's organic compound. That means it should have carbon also. But carbon's percentage is not given. So what do we do? Well, we can remove that. And determine its molecular formula. Please cancel empirical. Write molecular formula. If the compound contains 12 atoms of carbon. Now that's a useful information. But let's start with the table. The percentage is... I found the percentage of carbon by subtracting these from 100. Atomic weights are given. I got atomic ratio. Simplest ratio by dividing these numbers by the smallest number, which is 3.213. This is obviously double of it. This is clearly 1. And this also seems to be approximately 1. 1.1 1 .1 or 1.2, which is fine. Just write 1 out here. So empirical formula is CH2O. Uh, but I want to find the value of N now. For that, I need the molecular weight. And molecular weight is not given. Even vapor density is not given. So, how do I go ahead? But they have given one piece of information that the molecular formula actually contains 12 atoms of carbon each. So, I know that in the final answer, C should be 12. But in my empirical formula, C is only 1. That means N's value is 12. Because clearly, the molecular formula is 12 times the empirical formula Applying that, I get my final answer as C12H24O12. And now, finally, the 11th sum. A salt has the following percentage composition. So, aluminium, potassium and sulfur is given. Oxygen is not given, but that you can find out. Because the total should always be 100%. And calculate the empirical formula. Oh, that's great. They don't want the molecular formula. They just want the empirical formula. So, it's a shorter sum. So, the table as usual. Atomic weights are given. Atomic ratio. Simplest ratio, divide each of these numbers by the smallest number, 0 0.387. This is 1, this is 1. This is 2.0 something, so it's double. This is 8.0 something, so just write 8. And the empirical formula is this. But now, they've mentioned a salt has the following. We don't know any salt with such a formula. Uh, we know that salts are chloride, sulfate, sulfites, nitrates, carbonates, bicarbonates, iodides. So using that knowledge... We should write it properly, ALKSO4 twice. That's sulfate, right? So you will. The more sums you do, the more used to you will get to this, and you will realize the small differences in each sum. Many sums are unique because of this last step being different. And when you do the remaining sums, make sure you calculate everything by hand. It's there are not many sums here, so you can definitely do them very well. And please do these solid examples thoroughly. The these sums can also come in the exams and they are also quite unique especially this one it's an IMP sum and even the sixth sum is quite unique so let me just I'll be explaining this sum in the lecture you try it out by studying this first hi students this is AJ sir if you like this video press the like button if you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures email me or message me on Instagram Check the description for more information.